He was one of Britain's top spies, according to Iranian state TV, and the regime was keen to make the most of his alleged confession. The commentator lists the evidence as he appears again and again, different settings, different clothes. Ali Reza Akbari admits contact with the British, but never actually confesses to spying. The British agent knew me better than I knew myself. But in the footage, Akbari looks tired and drawn, possibly hinting at a different story. One he himself reveals in a taped conversation released by his family before his death. Imagine you're kept in solitary confinement for 10 to 12 months. You haven't talked to anybody. You show resistance to avoid talking about something that didn't happen. Then they put you in a situation between life and death. I was forced to change my clothes nearly 10 times at gunpoint. They forcibly dyed my hair. At first, I thought they wanted to release me. But on Wednesday, Akbar's family was told to visit him at the notorious Even prison in Tehran for the last time. Today, the Iranian judicial authorities announced he'd been executed. Mr. Akbari's execution, I think, is uh, timed to signal uh, to the international community that uh, Iran is going to continue its harsh repressive measures domestically to contain the protests that we have been witnessing since September of last year. Uh, it's also uh, timed to feed into a government narrative that uh, has been blaming the West for fomenting unrest in Iran. The Prime Minister says he's appalled by the execution, describing it as a callous and cowardly act carried out by a barbaric regime with no respect for the human rights of their own people. Even before Akbari's death, more than 100 MEPs had called for stronger action against Iran. The German foreign minister went even further, calling for the Islamic Revolutionary Guard to be prescribed. That's under consideration here too. Should the UK government prescribe the IRGC, uh, this would be a serious escalation. It would probably result in the severing of diplomatic ties between the UK and Iran, uh, because the IRGC is a very important economic and security entity uh, that plays a critical role in uh, the Islamic Republic's domestic, uh, economic and regional foreign policy. Two days ago, MPs here called for the Islamic Revolutionary Guard to be prescribed, but that wasn't one of the measures announced today. In response to uh, this execution, we have uh, summoned the Iranian charge d'affaires. We have imposed uh, sanctions against the Prosecutor General, and we have also decided to temporarily withdraw our ambassador for further consultations. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard is at the forefront of the crackdown on the recent unrest in Iran. More than 500 protesters have been killed. Relations between the UK and Iran have deteriorated as a result, making it even harder for the government to secure the release of the other British dual nationals who are also currently in prison there. Well, earlier I spoke to the Conservative MP Alicia Cairns, who's chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee. I started asking her if the UK's response had been enough. So they've just announced that they are also introducing um, sanctions against the chief prosecutor. And whilst that's a good step, the issue remains that we have not protected ourselves sufficiently at home from a state that is not just committing tyranny and you know, persecuting their own people, but is attempting assassinations here in Britain and across Europe effectively. So what are you suggesting? We need to take meaningful action. So first of all, Parliament seems to be united. We need to prescribe the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Now, that is a big step. It'll be the first time that we recognise that a country can perpetrate terrorism. It is a state committing terrorist acts, whether it's supporting Russia and Ukraine, or whether it be in Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, the list goes on. We also need to look at, for example, potentially expelling Iranian spies, um, expelling the charge d'affaires. This is all about ultimately now reviewing where we are with our relationship with Iran. But could that also be counterproductive for those British Iranian binationals who are still in custody in Iran? So there is no question that Iran is weaponizing human life and they take no qualms or hesitations about taking life. And that is 
something we have to do as much as we can to get those people out. And often the best way to get people out of Iranian prisons is to not talk about their British citizenship and to allow their Iranian families and members to get them out. But, but there are some people who think that um, Mr Akbari you know, was executed this morning precisely because Parliament was debating turning the Iranian Revolutionary Council uh, into a terrorist organisation. If that is true, then the Iranian regime chose to take someone's life because of the actions that they have perpetrated, the British government and the British pump would not be looking to prescribe the IRGC if it were not for the heinous actions they undertake. So I will take no responsibility for his death or because of the actions of British parliamentarians rightly acted to keep us safer. And to what extent do you think that his execution is linked to the fact that Iran, the Iranian regime is facing these unprecedented protests right now at home? It's exactly that. The Iranian government is desperate to wash away their sins by suggesting that it's the UK, US, Israel and others behind these protests, rather than the legitimate rising up of Iranians against unjust tyranny. Secondly, Mr Akbari has been blamed uh, in, within a game of factionalism because he used to work for one of the more moderate voices within Iran, who is still there in Iran, so perhaps it's a threat to them. And even today, they have tried to suggest that he was somehow responsible for the assassination of Iran's chief nuclear scientist in 2020, which was a failure of Iranian security, and they're trying to lay the blame elsewhere. So his murder, unfortunately, is their attempt to wash their hands of many sins. I just wonder if the problem with all this for the British government is that however tough our language, however many sanctions we impose, we won't be able to change the course of the Iranian regime, but we are going to endanger more uh, lives of uh, Iranian British binationals. We have a duty to be a voice for those who others seek to silence. And President Obama's greatest regret from his time as president was that when his civil servants told him, we cannot take action against Iran, we cannot be a voice for those who the Iranian regime are persecuting, he did that. And he believes that looking back, that was allowing Iran to set the narrative. We have to speak up for what is right, but we also have to fight as hard as we can to get British nationals out of prison and home. But at the end of the day, and finally, to get the right balance between a subtle approach that might ensure the release of the individual involved and a robust foreign policy approach that clearly signals where this government stands, that's incredibly tricky to do, isn't it? It's enormously difficult. And for a very long time, Iran was quite reactive when they were going on the aggressive. So it was about when they felt slighted or humiliated. That has now changed particularly because of these protests. It is a regime that is cornered and is now lashing out. And that makes it a far more dangerous beast than it's been before. But that also requires us to reconsider our position. Alicia Kearns, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.